TV, and we mentioned the coach, John Herman, who ahead of his World Cup journey sat down with Rick Westhead. In at least one way, our jobs are similar. As a coach and a journalist, we're asking people to be vulnerable and honest with us yeah. about things. How do you establish that trust with the players who play for you and with the people who work around you? Oh, man. There's so many layers to it. But, but the, the simple part of it is, you, you've got to create safety to, to get trust. And, and safety, safety is that people know that you're real, that you're human. That, that's a starting point. They've seen me at my best and they've seen me at my worst. Uh, and recognizing that you you never will have all the answers. Like they expect leaders to have all the answers, but as soon as you show them you don't, they start to realize that it's okay. And 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 that safety is is that nobody is is superhuman. No one's this. I mean, I remember the game against Haiti. At the end of that game, we brought the players into the circle, and I just couldn't find words. Just couldn't find any words. And I remember looking at the team and he just pulled me out of the shit in that moment. You know, he was, he recognized, okay, so you're not the big man <laughs> and uh, you need my help. So, you know, I think safety is the biggest thing. That, that's where trust forms and then you've got to figure out common purpose. Like, if there isn't a common purpose, then people do not trust each other. If we're not genuinely here for something that binds us, and that takes time. It's a, it's a process that takes time with individuals. And not many people are prepared to take that time in sport. Can you describe for people who don't understand what the ask has been of these players? These guys who are playing in Turkey, Serbia, to get on planes, travel around the world, get off the plane and get onto a pitch that's as hot as fresh paved, fresh paved asphalt and play immediately, juggling time zones and everything else. What ha how, how, how challenging is that? I don't think anyone's gonna understand what this really took. No one will understand it. You know, the fans will see and those that are just joining the journey, they'll just see a group of guys celebrating on the pitch, having fun together. Can you imagine the conversations they were having with their loved ones as we were asked to go out in the height of COVID and be the first national team in any sport in Canada to go and compete on a pitch where if you lost that game, your World Cup dream's over. They had six games where that dream was over in 90 minutes. They had to be there. And their, their friends, their families were telling them, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? You, you at the time, in, in, in that COVID time, it was perceived that you might be risking your life, risking your career. And we had tough conversations. There's no doubt that, that you know, these, these guys were, were wobbling through this journey. And then you say, now we're going to Haiti in a country that hasn't got COVID under control, that's in the middle of a, a potential coup, <laughs> and you're gonna go in there, and again, you woke up dreams on the line. I mean, it was a lot, mentally, emotionally. I don't wanna gloss over that. I, I am hearing what you're saying. I could feel the hair on the back of my neck standing up when you were saying that. Um, John, you know, looking now at the World Cup right in front of us, how are you feeling? How excited are your people? about this opportunity? This is a massive opportunity. I mean, I think we have the biggest opportunity in the world. You know, I'd hate to be Belgium or Croatia, because they go there, they go there all the time. And they carry in that, that weight of expectation that we might be the team that get beat off Canada. We might be the team that don't get to the quarterfinal. For us, we haven't been here for 30 odd years as a country. I know the majority of fans are just going to enjoy this moment for what it is. The first time in generations that they've been able to put their Italian jersey in the draw, their Croatian jersey in the draw, their Greek jersey in the draw, and put the red on. 
So for us, we, we knew this. this. This was a big opportunity to unite the country coast to coast. And the mission is to score that first goal. That's it, to, to have that celebration and know that 15 million people, however million, are watching that game from coast to coast. They're jumping around their living rooms there. The people in the stadium are celebrating. And you know, that's, that's not the only goal, but for us, that that's the starting point. Thank you. Thank you. John Herman, in many ways, truly the man, the myth, the legend. And Tash, to hear his players talk about him, Alfonso Davies said he would run through a wall for John Herman. And we know the backstory. It goes from a school teacher in Northeast England to becoming a coach, coached the women's team for so many years. Christine Sinclair has also talked about how he truly is life changing. And now he's with the men's team and is taking Canada's squad to the World Cup for the first time in 36 years. How has he changed the men's side of the game? Well, you know, in soccer, you know, it's fine margins. You know, talent is obviously needed at all times, but the difference is the culture, you know, how the players are motivated, what drives them, what's their reason why, and that's what John has brought to this group. He's brought a purpose to the group, like he said in the interview there. And no matter how you feel, no matter how you're playing, you always know your reason why you're playing. And that's for your country. And that's what he's brought to this group. He's brought that belief. He's brought that fearlessness that this group has shown on multiple occasions. And, you know, culture is the difference here. And that brotherhood that he created is what, Canada, is what got Canada to this World Cup. And, you know, I've been in many camps with John. And, you know, the feeling that he gives you when you're, he's speaking, his speeches, his visuals, it makes you believe that you can truly make the World Cup, you can beat number two Belgium, and you can be the best player in the world, like Alfonso is as a left back. Well, I know you've had your own experiences with him, and it is remarkable. It's extremely fascinating how he's able to get each and every player on his squad to truly buy into that system. And as you say, Toss, it has become a brotherhood that we will get to witness later on today. Canada and Belgium at 2 p.m. Eastern as they prepare for their first match at Ahmed Ben Ali. But for now, we are less than half an hour away until Germany and Japan square off from Halifa International Stadium.